Hello, this is my uh, new setup. It's been a long time since I've uh, put together any kind of video explaining to me what, explaining uh, what I was doing. Um, we got a new uh, farm that we purchased, and I moved everything out here. So, um, yeah, okay, we heat this farm with uh, wood, wood burning stove, and uh, I got the stove there, and it kicks out quite a bit of heat. I can maintain um, 90 degrees inside this building all winter long. I plastic up around the windows to uh, maintain um, the heat inside here. Um, but yeah, let me just kind of go through the setup. I'm, uh, I previously ran metal halide lights for everything. Um, I'm wanting to switch over to running LED. It's uh, less power consumption and um, it's not necessary to run 400 white. 400 watt lights per bed when I could run 60 watts per bed with LED. So power consumption is an issue. Um, this new setup that I've got um, is built all with IBC totes for the most part. I have uh, my main uh, the sump pump here draws from these um, tanks down here and it works off of a float valve so once it drops to a certain point it shuts off. You can see there's redirection flow back into the tank so I can um, regulate how much water goes to my mechanical filtration. So every single one of these tanks is tied together with uh, plumbing down here. So there's two inch and it goes over to three inch over there and I, I can go look at that later. So they all are one level. It all rises and falls together so that I maintain a good uh, water level throughout the whole system. So um, so the pump pumps the water up through this pipe over to my 55 gallon barrels here that I'm using for uh, filtration. I have four of them. This first one here serves as a swirl filter and you can see kind of that it you know it goes down and then it overflows into there. It's my swirl filtration. I've been harvesting a lot of uh, manure off of this tank um, since I've had it set up. And from there it overflows into this tank here, which is kind of my version of a radial flow, radial flow filter. And in here, there's a, a pad. Um, there's kind of a fibrous pad that's holding down some lava rock that's in there. And that lava rock is serving as a medium for bacterial growth. And so the pipe here distributes water down to the very bottom. And at the bottom, there's a curved piece similar to what this looks like. It pieces cut out of it, but imagine that on this pipe. So that water is forced to the very bottom to where it has to then go up to be filtered through the lava rock. Now, some stuff will be let through, of course, because the lava rock is pretty large. But I made it that way so it would be easy for the waste to be collected at the bottom so that I can drain it. Each uh, 55 gallon drum has a drain from the bottom of it so I can harvest off of it. So that one overflows into this one and this also has a radial flow uh, filter. I'm pretty much doing the same thing for the next three um, just because it's uh, simple and cheap. This is the pad that I use to uh, essentially pull down the lava rock um, to kind of keep it from getting into the overflow the overflow of the next tank. So that next one goes into there and then it ultimately gets put into this tank here. This is my clean water tank, or what I call it. It's uh, free of solid filtration, or solids. And the filtration, is, mechanical filtration has already been done. So from this tank here, I've got another pump um, with a uh, float valve and that pumps the water up to all the grow beds. And so it, I don't have this choked off at all. Each bed has quite a bit of water delivered to it and there's quite a few beds. It kind of goes all the way to the end there and loops up to that triangle and all the way down to this bed. So this is almost fully open and it water flows pretty free. So this tank drains much faster than what that inlet can draw. And I did that for a reason so that um, this would stop pumping and water would stop being distributed to the bed so that these bell siphons can essentially finish draining off all of the tanks down to the bottom.
makes for more of a controlled setup and then you're not constantly, your roots aren't constant, constantly submerged in water. It's possible and it's fine to have them constantly submerged in water, especially during their young age. That's why I took the bell siphon out. Because I have kale growing and it's young, so I kind of want it to be a high water level. But once the roots get more established, I'll definitely be draining the beds. And you can see the pump kicked off, so it's just kind of going through its stage there where it's now going to fill back up to turn on and distribute. Uh, these pumps, these dump pumps I got from Harbor Freight, they are not very reliable. So I've had this pump fail twice, well I've replaced it twice, so I put in that overflow. So this is an emergency overflow which goes down to here into a tank that if that fills up, it pumps back with this hose into here, which is, I'm going to build a more permanent setup for that eventually, but I'm kind of trying to work with what pumps I've got and figure out which ones are best. So I think I'm going to, uh, when this one fails, and I say when, because uh, it's just going to happen, I'm just going to take it back and ask if I can get money towards a nicer pump. Um, hopefully a more expensive pump will work. Maybe somebody else knows if they're more familiar with uh, aquaponics. They have cast iron sewage. Um, sump pumps and I don't really trust the fact that it's cast iron and not stainless um, I know you're not really supposed to use any kind of metal that's not stainless in a system with uh, aquaponics because it could alter the chemical makeup of the water and also affect the bacteria growth so if anyone else has more experience um, in pumps uh, that would be nice to know because it you can spend a lot of money on pumps and I do have two, but I made it more of a complex system this time so that I could reduce the amount of solids first off to get to the bed and reduce the constant water supply being distributed to them like I had before. So this way kind of seems like it would work better. This is my 12th aquaponic system over the past few years and um, so far this is the most complex one that I've built and it's... Uh, seems to be working fine. The last system that I had um, got really gunked up and I had to clean the, uh, the pea gravel once a year and that just got, you know, kind of monotonous. And so I figured I can, I don't need to have all that solid filtration done by the rock. I can have that done by the mechanical filtration here with these barrels. And it makes for cleaning up these barrels a lot easier than cleaning every rock in the beds. So. Um, but yeah, the plumbing goes, this is so that I can drain the tanks if I need to. I can just hook a hose up to it and, and run it. Um, I built a catwalk here so that I could get access to all of the plumbing if, if need be. And uh, it's all hinged so that I can access it. And that's all three inch PVC going to two inch to each tank. And it kind of goes all the way down there to maintain a good water level. And that seems to be working fine. Um, up here I can kind of walk to the, the edge of it but yeah it seems to be working pretty well and I haven't had too much trouble with it I'm sure that there'll be troubles with it eventually in the future but uh, as of right now it seems to be working fine so, yeah that's the gist of the system I got tanks around here with tilapia in them for breeding which are, it's a whole breeding setup that I've got going I can do another video about that later. But this is the latest aquaponic system and it is November 6, 2013. I'm trying to keep track of everything that I've been doing since I haven't done so in a long time. So thanks for watching and uh, I'll be uploading stuff a lot more often now. Thanks.